Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, Damen und Herren, this is my comic pool for December 7th, 2016. First up from American Gothic Press, it's Irwin Allen's Lost in Space, The Lost Adventures number six. So this finishes up the Malice in Wonderland storyline. You know, the wacky adventure where Will, Penny, Robot, and Dr. Smith were magically transported into the Lewis Carroll book by a psychic purple llama named Willoughby. And just when I thought this story was going nowhere, in this issue they actually introduce a plot and an alien foe. Uh, so while I didn't care for this story overall, it did end well. But hopefully the next one will be better. <laughs> Moving on to Dark Horse and Aliens Defiance number 7. So in the last issue, Zula and Davis 1 had just rescued Dr. Hollis and blown up a fueling station, along with a ship full of colonial marines. Um, in this issue, they drift into a quiet part of space to recover and regroup. But their reprieve is short-lived when something more urgent threatens to emerge. <laughs> Uh, this was a fantastic issue. Uh, Brian Wood's story and Stephen Thompson's art flow so well that you know it's a very quick read. It was over that quick. I thought, no, I'm not done, but I was done. <laughs> and it's very suspenseful. Um, it definitely left me wanting more. Uh, moving on to DC and Cyborg number six. In the last issue, Vic reluctantly agreed to attempt to recreate the experiment that turned him into Cyborg in order to save the life of a mortally injured government agent named Scarlett Taylor and to retrieve the important information that only she knows. Uh, in this issue, Vic trains Scarlett, who's now calling herself Variant, uh, but unknown to him, this could all be part of someone else's bigger plan. I like this issue. The story seemed to advance rather quickly, which is a nice change from a lot of these other comics that I read that progress at a snail's pace. I'm looking at you, Outcast and Scooby Apocalypse. <laughs> Will Conrad's art was also great. Um, much better than splitting it up between two artists like they did in the last issue. Next, I got Flintstones number six. So Bedrock is gripped by panic at the news that an asteroid is heading towards Earth, threatening to wipe out all life. There's a lot going on in this issue. Um, happiness, depending on your point of view, living in an elitist society, and how quickly that can devolve into a mob mentality. It's a pretty accurate reflection on today's society. Um, next up, it's Midnighter and Apollo number three. So Midnighter literally goes to hell to try and save Apollo, who is playing a high stakes game with Neuron, the lord of the underworld. We're at the halfway point of this miniseries, and I'm really starting to dig it. Not quite as much as the last run, but pretty close. Uh, Steve Orlando's really got a way of writing these characters, and I'm even beginning to like Fernando Blanco's art as well. Next is Nightwing number 10. Um, after all that Dick has been through, he decides to set up shop in Bloodhaven. As he says, a place close to family and friends, but not so close that he can figure out who he is without them. But of course, this mission of self-discovery gets cut short when Gorilla Grimm shows up and Dick is once again pulled into a life of intrigue. This is an excellent first issue of the story arc. Um, Tim Seeley sets things up great and includes some funny moments as well. Marcus II's art is okay, but da booty do. DC has no problem putting that front and center, do they? Moving on to Dynamite Entertainment and Wonder Woman 77 meets the Bionic Woman number one. Jamie Summers and Diana Prince are both in town for an interagency meeting, but as they're both on their way there separately, they come across an office building fire. The two meet, work together to save the people inside, and kind of hit it off. Uh, but there may be something bigger behind this disaster that they don't know about. Uh, now as a child of the 70s and a fan of both of these series as a kid, uh, I was really looking forward to this comic when I heard about it. And I wasn't disappointed. Uh, Andy Mangel's writing was excellent. Uh, he manages to quickly develop a rapport between the two title characters in just a couple of pages. And he does a great job of setting up the plot too. I didn't especially love Judith Tundor's art, but it was serviceable and has some of the classic sound effects visualized, uh, which I thought was a cool touch. So overall, I'm looking forward to the rest of the six-issue miniseries. 
On to IDW and X-Files Origins number four. Fox and his friends find out what's going on on Martha's Vineyard and Dana tracks down her teacher's murderer. But their separate tales may not be so separate after all. I really like this title. Uh, the stories had nice flows and the art was a good match. And the question mark at the end of both tales makes me hopeful that this title will continue uh, either as another miniseries or as an ongoing series. Next from Image is The Walking Dead number 161. It's part 5 of The Whisperer War. Hilltop is on fire, and the only way to escape from the blaze is riding to the waiting arms of the Whisperers. Uh, but the Hilltopians ain't going down without a fight. Uh, one more issue to go in this story arc, and it looks like it's going to be an awesome ending. I especially like how Eugene is portrayed here. He's really had a lot of growth as a character, which means he's probably going to die soon. <sighs> And my battery died, so <laughs> where was I? Yes, moving on to Marvel, and my final title of the week is Star Wars Dr. Aphra number one. And I'm all Star Wars out, my R2D2 shirt, and my little R2D2 toque here, so ready to go. When last we saw Dr. Aphra, she had just been rescued by her two homicidal droids after being shoved out of an airlock by Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith. So since faking her own death, she's gone back to her old ways as a rogue archaeologist slash relic hunter. At her side are the murderous robots, Triple Zero and BT, plus Muscle for Hire, Black Carstur, the Wookiee bounty hunter, is also along for the ride. Um, there's also a prequel after the end of this, which gives us some of Aphra's backstory. I thought this was a fun first issue. Uh, there's an entertaining assortment of characters, and I'm glad we get more of Dr. Aphra, as I quite liked her in both the Star Wars and the Vader comics. Um, I think... All right, Kat just knocked the tripod there. <laughs> ah. So, all right, sit down. Anyway, I think it's cool that we get... Anyway, I think it's cool we get more adventures with her, and I like that she is a female scoundrel. So, that is all for this week's poll, kiddos. Uh, please hit like and subscribe, and drop me a comment below, and we... Ah, we'll see you later.